Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Wayne Hall talking again from, speaking again from Athens. Um, it's the 4th of November 2019. Um, we're going to be talking about energy today. It's uh, because uh, next weekend we will be, uh, there's going to be a, a meeting called the Global Breakthrough Energy Movement going to be held in Holland. Uh, and we're going to be doing some uh, live streaming and watching it. Uh, from Athens. Today uh, I'm going to be talking again, for, this is the second time I've uh, spoken with uh, Raul Mayer. We call him Ilargi, or he calls himself Ilargi. Everyone, well, not everyone calls him Ilargi, but anyway, um, Raul Mayer uh, has been involved with the subject of energy, although it was uh, some years in the past apparently, uh, when he was, uh, he was with a site called uh, Oil Drum. And then after that, he started a site called the Automatic Earth uh, with his friend Nicole Foss. The Automatic Earth continues till t today, uh, and you can, uh, if you want to look it up, you can you can find it on the internet. And you can also uh, <laughs> you can also help Ilargi uh, uh, with some contributions also, uh, because that would be uh, that's becoming uh, more and more necessary in this age when the. Uh, restrictions and uh, being imposed more and more on uh, bloggers. But anyway, let's get back to the subject of energy. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. You wrote a few days ago in Automatic Earth, is it a good idea to be drawn back into the subject of energy? We used to do so much on the topic, Nicole Foss and I, in the first years of the Automatic Earth. And before that, at the brilliant oil drum where we had all those equally brilliant oil professionals to guide us on. So why revisit it? Well that's the question, why revisit it? That was my problem. Uh, 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 well your question before was why don't we write so much about energy anymore? Nicole and I left the oil drum because we wanted to talk about finance which seemed a, uh, you know, 2008, 2007, a, uh, an important topic and they didn't think so, or they thought we shouldn't do that because we don't have PhDs in economics, or something like that. But I, I was uh, looking early today and I wrote quite a bit on energy. Oh, did you write uh, something uh, today rec too? Recently. Oh, recently, I know. Yeah, yeah, today yeah. also? No, not today. Not today, no. right. Oh. Well, uh, one thing you said recently was the peak oil idea, uh, which is that we reached the peak in 2005, or so, has not changed. Do you still think that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people, I mean, the peak oil idea has kind of gone out of fashion. There was a lot of talk about it a few years ago, but uh, people have gone quiet on it. Why? I guess because of the advent of shale and, and fracking and, and that kind of thing. But I don't see that as anything that could uh, negate the, the entire peak oil idea. You did write that the look at the energy return you get from shale. You go from a hundred to one to, if you're lucky, five to one. Now, what exactly do you mean when you say that? The energy return on energy invested. Yeah. How much energy do you have to put into an operation, and how much do you get out? Now, a hundred to one seems like less. It seems you're getting uh, you're getting less than. Then you, you get, if you have five to one, that seems to... No, it's be, the opposite. It's the opposite. Why is it the opposite? <laughs> <laughs> well, a hundred to one means you get a hundred barrels of oil uh -huh. uh, worth of energy yeah. by putting in one. Uh -huh, all and right, five okay. to one means you get only five all right, I see. in okay. return. Yeah. All right. But it's, it's also like, since, since we mentioned shale, it's, it's important to note that uh, the whole shale operation in the U.S. is going bankrupt yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Because, because it's it doesn't return enough energy yeah it only returns money, money. and that's kind of stuff and it loans does i think doesn't it what's that it works with loans i mean they're borrowed to oh it works on credit yeah. yeah well another thing you're right you're right is this the lifestyles of the last 10 generations of us especially westerners are characterized more than anything else by the huge increase in the use of energy as we went from wood to peat to coal to oil and gas, the energy return on energy investment kept going higher. But that stopped with oil and gas. 
and from now on it will keep going down. All right, that's what you wrote. I suppose you still, that's what you think, and what will the consequences be? Well, the 100 to 1 was, was when, when uh, the oil could be explored, exploited uh, like, like very easily when it was spouting out of the ground. And that already is not true anymore. So mm. most of the oil, even the conventional oil that you get out of the ground now, uh, is a lot less than 100 to 1. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, you also write, I've never understood what the idea behind the Extinction Rebellion is. Uh, do they think once oil is gone, you can put wind and solar in its place and off we go again? Do you think this is a basic uh, assumption of the people who are... Well, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I haven't seen any, any very clear or, or good explanations behind what they want. But to me, what they seem to want is just, uh, zero carbon. Yeah. And, and then they think something will take the place of, of oil. Yeah. Is, do you think this is a rational desire, a desire for zero carbon, or is it, is it dictated by some kind of... It's, it's impossible. It's impossible. So you don't even have to talk about it. Mm. Well, I talk a lot about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's a waste of time. <laughs> well, who's time to <laughs> time <laughs> out? Um, anyway, the... Um, no, but I could, but with, yeah. with anything you want to build, wind or solar, there will always be a lot of oil involved, in, yeah. uh, like, like mining uh, for right. whatever metals or, or building wind turbines. It, there's a lot of oil involved, so it'll never be zero carbon. Right, right. Um, the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal, meaning 100% of power demand through clean, renewable and zero emission energy sources. Yes, yeah, so that, that's, that doesn't exist. That's what you say, there are no zero emission sources. Exactly. And yeah, there, are, there is no clean energy. The only clean energy is the one that you don't use. As soon as you use energy, you produce waste. Yeah. Thermodynamics, that's what it says. Right. Um, different forms of carbon have offered us a one-time source of free energy that we will not have again. The idea that we can replace it with clean energy is ludicrous. The return on energy investment doesn't even come close, is what you're saying. Anything more well, on, on On what people label clean energy these days, yeah. yeah. But I, I don't do that, I just explain that. But, right. but again. According to what some people call the fourth law of thermodynamics, all systems and organisms seek to maximize their use of energy for pure survival reasons. The one that's most efficient in its ability to exploit and utilize external energy sources will survive. And then, to say one must use less energy, you find this peculiar. Perhaps to shift from oil to energy sources with less density like solar or wind. You make the comment, be careful because this says you're putting your odds of survival at risk. You know, well, what does this mean? You have, you, that one should stay with oil or... That's not an option anyway, apparently. So. What's the basic point that you're making here? Well, there are there are several points. Like if, if you if you start with the idea that um, the maximum power principle says that we are DNA RNA driven mm. to maximize our use of energy, not yes. our efficiency, but our use of yes. energy. Like whatever we can get our hands on, right. we will use. Right. And, and if we cannot do anything useful with it, then we will burn it mm. and produce waste. Right. Oh, look at us. That's, that's, that's what's, what's happening, doing. right. Yeah. Well, you say, specifically, natural selection leads organisms to become adapted. The fittest individuals are those who succeed in generating more power and reproducing more copies. That's of not me. That's Jay Hansen. That's Hansen. I the, see. The, you. The, this Hansen is someone that you uh, quite admire, huh? or uh, still admire, perhaps. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right, um, well, getting on to uh, this subject, can, you, can we show this? This is, this, well, you show it, right? This is called High Country News. It's an American uh, ecological magazine. And I want to be caught with this in my hands? <laughs> well, what is it? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's an ecological magazine. The West must again weigh a nuclear fuel. Yes, yes, it's an, <laughs> ecological <do> <laughs> it's an ecological magazine which is promoting nuclear energy since 2017. Yeah. Uh, now, what can men say about it? Yucca. Uh, 
Yucca Mountain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, okay. Right. Yucca Mountain. Yeah, okay. That, that's that's the, 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 the last reliable thing we have. And that's already like 20 years ago or something. The, the last judge uh, ruled that the nuclear waste that was destined for Yucca Mountain uh, uh, waste storage uh, facility had to be safe for 100,000 years, yeah, which yeah. is completely impossible. Yes, no yes. human being can guarantee anything for 100,000 years yeah. while we live only less than 100. Yes, yes, yes. So, so Yucca Mountain is, uh, has never, billions of, billions of dollars have, have been put into it. It has never been used for the purpose that it was destined for. And now it will already be too small for all the nuclear waste that has been generated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, this whole development. Does so it the, 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 but I think that's that's important for for nuclear energy. You, 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 people want uh, to use nuclear energy, but it generates waste. What are they going to do with it? Nobody knows. No. But yeah, this we keep on producing it. I was just reading an article that said how much money is lost for every nuclear plant in the world. Mm. Billions, billions, billions. Mm. These things are not productive, uh, they don't pay for themselves. Mm. Yes, this has been known It's for waste. Years. But then that's coming back into fashion now. What does this, does this represent the latest stages of a step-by-step -step process where renewables such as industrial solar farms, particularly wind farms, are deployed on a massive scale and then subsequently the disadvantages of the transition are discovered that they're expensive, inefficient, ecologically destructive, damaging to health, etc, etc. And then there's the rediscovery of the beauties of nuclear fission and ecologists are tasked with discovering it like what we saw here. Is this excessively paranoid to, to, to say that this step-by-step -step process was premeditated? Does it attribute too much foresight and Machiavellianism to the opponents of leftists and Greens who have been co-opted into this. Does what do you say? Does it matter? I don't know if it matters. You don't think I mean, it matters. I, I, the results are the same. I would say that nuclear falls in the same category as wind or solar. It's too expensive. Not enough energy comes out of it. The net energy. So, don't do right. it. Yeah, the, there's only one thing we can reasonably do, rationally do. Use less energy. Use less energy. All right, well, this is something I've heard you say this before. I'm not sure about it. But anyway, uh, I'll just say that uh, this is an introduction to the uh, global BEM discussion that we're going to be having next weekend. So thank you very much for giving us int this introduction, which we will be playing next week. So thank you. <laughs> Glad to be of service. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, your dad called me a nihilist last week. <laughs> And I, I said, the last time I heard those words was when the Big Lebowski came out in the movie. <laughs> there were nihilists in that. And then today I read the word nihilist because the philosopher Slavoj Zizek uh, did a, a review of the Joker movie. Ah. And, and he said the Joker is sort of like the ultimate nihilist. Oh, right. And I've heard it twice. <laughs>